Welcome to my top five favorite tutorials from how to use Emus as a clinician, the ultimate Emus course. Now, as I explained in this previous video, which is a walkthrough of the course, a lot of these tutorials were actually email requests from you guys. So I get a lot of emails saying, Mike, how can I do this in Emus? And I've really tried to incorporate most of those requests within the how to use Emus as a clinician course. But I thought it would be really cool if I kind of shared my personal top five favorites from this course. And we will effectively do it in reverse order. So we'll start from number five, going down to number one, my favorite one. So starting at number five is the appointment book in depth. And the reason why I find this really important is that I have found that a lot of GPs just leave booking appointments to the admin staff. And they feel that it's effectively not their job to book patients in for appointments. And I disagree with that. The reason why I disagree with that is because I like to have control over what is happening in my clinics and with my patients effectively. So let me give you an example. If it is the first time that you are meeting a patient and let's say it's a mental health consult and it's pretty complicated and you're sending them for counseling or starting antidepressants, you want to make sure that you have a follow-up booked with that patient. And what I often see is doctors basically tell the patients, you know what, go to the receptionist and book an appointment in two to four weeks time. And so although most times that's probably okay, personally, I like to spend 30 seconds with that patient to make sure that I have a booked appointment with that patient at a time that is convenient for them and convenient for me. And so by understanding the appointment book in depth, I will show you exactly how to book those appointments, how to book double appointments, how to block out slots, for instance, if you are meant to supervise medical students, and how to claw back a little more control in your day-to-day -day as a GP. This is important not only for that patient journey, but it's really important medical legally as well. If you send the patient out the door and say, you know what, book in in about two to four weeks time, how do you actually know that that patient is going to book in that appointment? So I feel that as a GP, I want the power to be able to book my own follow-up appointments. Number four is if you love cleaning. And the reason that I created this tutorial is that I actually got an email request. This is from Dr. Amal Matthew, and this is from September 2022. And he basically wanted to know if I knew how to group or combine problems. When I was a GP reg in Chorley in Lancashire, my supervisor, Dr. Mark Sloan, was really into this kind of stuff. And he was an excellent supervisor, by the way. But he was pretty particular about how he wanted that problems window to look. And so he taught all of his trainees, or at least he taught me on how to combine problems and combine them and even link medication to certain problems. So that is effectively something that I will go through in that tutorial with you. And it's right here in getting started with consultations in EMIS, if you love cleaning, tidying up problems. Now, number three is how can I help you? And this is such an important tutorial because there is nothing more embarrassing than a patient sitting down in front of you at the start of your consultation and you do your usual introduction. So in my case, it's, hi, I'm Dr. Mike. I'm one of the GPs. How can we help you today? And then the patient says, well, I don't know, you tell me, you called me. And what makes this even more awkward is that they're basically implying that I personally called them to tell them to come in. And now I don't even know why they're here. Obviously they do mean that the practice called them to come in. And this has happened to me so many times and it is super embarrassing. And so basically in this tutorial, I am going to show you where all of the hidden tasks live and that is in the diary system that I had no idea about when I was starting with Emus. <laughs> and so hopefully I will save you a lot of pain and a lot of embarrassment in front of your patients by showing you how to make sure that you are prepared even before that patient sits down. And you can find that tutorial in consultations and more under how can I help you? You tell me, you called me. Now number two in our list is Big Brother is watching. And I'm gonna scroll down to it and it's right here in consultations and more. Big Brother is watching. And the reason why I find this tutorial so interesting is that I'm really into medical legal stuff. And I actually read case books for fun in my free time. To actually emphasize how nerdy I am about it, I signed up to a second MDO just to get their case book. Although I'm not paying their premium, I somehow got through a loophole where they think I'm a member, I'm not paying the premium, but they're actually sending me case books. That's how nerdy I am about medical legal stuff. And I just find it so fascinating that in Emus, there is a clear audit trail about every edit that goes into your consultation. Even if you delete the consultation, it's still there. And I'm gonna basically show you where those edits, where those deleted consultations live. And it's not to kind of scare you or to catch out someone who's doing something bad. I just find it so interesting that we can actually follow this. And the reason why I think that this is so important and that you have knowledge about where these things live is that when I read these case books, a lot of cases fall flat on their face because of documentation or rather poor documentation is what I mean by that. And so if you understand 
and how important that is and how that whole system works in Emis. Well, again, that will save you also a lot of pain, not if you get a complaint, but when you get a complaint effectively. And uh, on a side note, to help you deal with your first complaint, I did create a video that was inspired by my first complaint. And I'll add the link in the description below. This is the video I'm talking about. Finally, the number one video in how to use Emus as a clinician is searches and population reporting. Now, the reason I chose this is that Emus, out of all of the clinical systems, probably does searches the best. And searches are such a powerful tool in doing audits and quality improvement, but also monitoring your own work. The thing about searches though in Emus is that once you go into that searches screen, it is super daunting. There are loads of buttons and you don't really know which one to press. And so I'm gonna talk you through the process step-by-step. Step. Interestingly enough, one of my most popular videos on my YouTube channel is the Emus searches video. And that video actually landed me quite a bit of paid work by doing searches for other people. Now I do include that video in this tutorial. I have remastered it and that I kind of removed all the funny bits because I just wanna show you exactly how to do searches. If you wanna see the funny bits, then obviously you'll go onto the YouTube channel. I mean, arguably funny bits is what I meant to say. But then I created a second video about searches on top of that original video, just to show you how to do searches on the example of a Twitter request that I got. And so if you want to know the answer to that initial Twitter your question. And if you want to have a really easy step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use searches and emails, well, this is the one. Right, that's it, guys. That was my top five. I hope that was useful. Let me know in the comments below if you have your own personal favorites. I mean, there are a lot of really useful videos here. And some of them are a bit quirky. I really hope you're finding it super, super useful. If you do have any issues or comments, feel free to email me directly. Otherwise, good luck.